Hello and welcome back to the 12 Makes of Christmas series from Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today is day four and we're going to be making a super simple Christmas stocking. We've done a Christmas stocking every year we've done this series and this one is the easiest yet. We're just going to use yardage so there's no piecing and you don't even have to quilt it if you don't want to. So for this one I am using Snow Day by Mr. Domestic and it's super cute and I picked this print here for my main one. One because obviously I love a sweaters but uh, actually these are quite cute sweaters but uh, the other part is because it's directional and the amount of fabric you need for your main stocking print will change whether you have a directional print or not so if you have a directional print like this one you're gonna want to make sure that you choose two-thirds of a yard instead of half a yard that's because this sweater we want it to be going from top to bottom instead of sideways on our Christmas stocking so that way if we do it this way then we're gonna have enough to go from the top to the bottom bottom of your stocking and everything will work out just fine that way. But if you just are doing one that doesn't have a right or wrong side like this one, you can definitely do a half yard and that's just fine. So that's all I have for my lining is the half yard. And then you need a quarter yard for your top. Now, if you are using a print like this, if you have come from the garment sewing world, you're probably used to working with woven fabrics. And in that case, a plaid would be woven and it would be straight and it would not be a big deal. Um, when it is a printed plaid like this, it is not usually printed on the straight of grain. So you're gonna wanna make sure you get a little bit extra. That way you can fussy cut it to keep it nice and straight. So that way when your stocking is hanging on the mantle, this looks nice and tidy as opposed to crooked and cockeyed. All right, so all the instructions for this pattern are you can get for free on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com, and it's called the Super Simple Christmas Stocking. And there's uh, instructions. We've got the template for your stocking. You can also, if you have a bunch that are you want to keep the size of, you can use an existing stocking as your template as well. You may need to adjust the sizing depending on how large or small it is of the amount of fabric you have that is but make sure you go over and download that and while you're there make sure you sign up for our emails because then you'll get the rest of the videos in the series sent straight to your inbox each day and then we'll send you weekly video tutorials for free after that when the series is over you can also subscribe to our channel on youtube and that way you definitely won't miss anything you'll get a notification either in your inbox or on your phone or wherever it is you are watching youtube all right, let's get to the instructions. This is so super easy and fast. You can have a stocking together probably within half an hour uh, from start to finish. So that is pretty good if you are doing it the night before Christmas, which I definitely have done before. I know we're quilters and we're also procrastinators. So here we go. Here's what we're gonna do. All right, so this is what I'm gonna use for my sleeve. So I'm gonna set that to the side for now. So now I've got my lining and I've got both of the same size facing up here. So I both right sides facing up and I've cut a half yard but I've also cut it across the fold so I've essentially created two fat quarters here that way I'm going to be more easily able to arrange them right sides together and I've done the same thing with my two-thirds yard of fabric again you only need half a yard if you are working with a print that's not a direction I've cut it apart on that fold that way I can arrange it right sides together all right, so now we've got to arrange these guys in the correct order so that our stocking comes together in the end. Now, if you wanted to quilt this first, you're gonna need an extra half a yard of fabric so that you can quilt your sandwich first. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna use the batting to give it a little extra oomph because it makes it go even faster and makes this project even simpler. So I'm taking one batting scrap that I've cut to about the size of a fat quarter and I'm going to lay that down with the pimple side facing up. There's dimples and pimples in batting. If you don't know what that is, we've got a video that talks all about quilting on your home sewing machine. We suggest you watch it. Then I'm going to take my fabric for my right side of my stocking, the outside, and I'm going to lay that down, trying to even up the tops because these are all kind of a little bit different size. And I'm gonna give that a nice smooth, get everything nice and flat. Now the next piece I need is going to be my top again so i need my outside and i'm going to lay that again right sides together now if you want to be really specific about how these line up so that way the sweaters are in the same line now is the time to do that this is not necessary you don't have to do this extra step but it is a nice little 
extra, it makes your stocking look a little bit more professional and better than you would get in the stores. So what I'm gonna do, I've just kind of folded this back and I'm just gonna kind of play with it and move it up and down a little bit until I feel like my sweaters are nice and even. So here I can see I've got my bottoms of my sweaters all about in the same spot at this point. So now I can fold that back over and then I'm gonna smooth out from here. And if I wanted to, I could pin this as well to make sure that they are as close as they can be when this is coming together. So what I would do then is I would kind of look at it and I would be like, okay, so over here, I'm in line. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a pin. I'm gonna line up the bottom of the sweaters and I'm gonna put a pin in there and I'm gonna go through all the layers. But I'm staying on the outsides because I don't want to, we're gonna cut through all the layers at once. I don't want them to be in the way. So now I'm gonna work my way across to the other side and verify that I'm all lined up and I am. So I'm gonna pin all the way through on this side as well. And then I'm gonna do that probably at the top and bottom on both sides, just to make sure that we are close enough and that's good enough for me. All right, so now that I have that all secured and it'll stay in place long enough for me to cut it, I'm gonna get my second piece of batting and I'm gonna arrange it again with the pimple side facing down against the wrong side of our main outer fabric. Smooth that out again. Don't want any lumps and bumps in our stockings. All right, so the last thing we need to do is get our lining together, and that needs to be right sides together as well. So the first piece I'm gonna lay down is going to be with the right side up. Now the second piece is going to be with the right side down. All right, so we've got that together. That is the hardest part, is just making sure that you layer it in the right order. You can watch this video as many times as you want, or you can follow along with the instructions as well. And again, those are downloadable for free over at shop.quiltladdicksnamas.com. We do also still have this fabric line uh, while supplies last. All right, so now I've got my stocking template, and this comes printed on four pages, so you'll have to cut it apart and tape it together like I've done here. And if you are a scrap saver, then go ahead and move it up to the the top corner because then you've got a lot of extra goodies that you can save and we've got some scrap friendly projects that you can use coming up later in the series so these are fun to keep and save and do other fun things with later all right so I'm gonna just go ahead and just roughly pin this I'm just gonna pin my top first and then work my way around the stocking. I am kind of trying to make sure that it's nice and straight um, and even with the edge of my fabric because I don't want those sweaters to look cockeyed after we took all the time to pin them together. All right, that's good enough for now. I really just need this to be held in place so that I can mark it with my template here. I'm gonna use a friction gel pen. You can use anything you want. You're never gonna see this because it's gonna be in the seam allowance inside the stocking. And remember, this is not, even though stockings are something that we keep for years and years, this is not an heirloom sewing project. It's not gonna be super hard. So if it's not super perfect, that's gonna be okay. One thing to remember, if you are doing this at home and you're not using this template, you're using an existing stocking that you have, make sure you add about a quarter inch around the edge of your stocking so that way you're accounting for your seam allowance. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a little bit smaller and you're gonna wonder what the heck happened. And it's because you, you sewed up in, in some of it in the, in the seam allowance when you sewed around. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these pins and remove this template for now. And we can save that for another stocking later. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my pins and I'm gonna go through all those layers again because we're gonna cut this all at once. Now I am gonna use a few more pins at this step because it's more important that my layers don't move at this step. So I'm gonna have all the same pins I had before, but I'm also gonna add a couple at the curves where I know that things might shift a little as I'm cutting. Now, ideally, you're gonna have a sharp blade in your rotary cutter for this step. I don't, I'm gonna be struggling a little bit here because we're going through a lot of layers of fabric. So what I like to do when I've got straightaways like the top here is use my rotary cutter for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and line everything up here. And that way I can also line up an inch line with my straight line here. And I see I just traveled up a little bit when I was marking so I can pretty easily square that off. All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a turn. All 
All right, now I'm gonna kind of freewheel around this curve. Do you watch your fingers? Your blades are sharp, ladies. You don't wanna to go to the hospital because you were cutting Christmas stockings. All right, I got another straight away here for a little bit. Now when you go to lift this out, if you find that anything didn't cut right, just use some scissors rather than go at it with your rotary cutter because that's a, it's hard to do with that and without getting everything all shaggy and uh, not so good. All right, so I've already got this in the order it needs to be for me to be able to sew it together. So I'm gonna use my walking foot for this because we have so many layers. And even for the piecing steps of this, I just leave my walking foot on because that's easier than going back and forth. And it really doesn't matter so much when you're doing it for tiny little projects like this. There are quilters who swear by using their walking foot for piecing as well. I've never found that that is helpful to me in most circumstances, but when it saves time, I'll do it for a project like this. So using my walking foot, I'm going to sew all the way around the edges of the stocking, leaving the top open so we can turn it right sides out when we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this first pin, that way I don't sew over it by accident. So I'm lining everything up here and I'm putting it, it's gonna be a little more in the quarter of an inch, but I want the right side of that walking foot on top, that feed dog, to be on the side of the fabric. That'll help me move it around more evenly. So I'm gonna start by sewing a little bit ahead and then I'm gonna sew a little back. And that'll get me a nice sturdy stitch that's not gonna come out when I pull that stocking right side out. When you get around to the other top, again, you're gonna to wanna to reinforce that by stitching back a little bit and then forward. And that'll keep everything together when you are pulling it out in the next step. So when you do this, the most important thing is to make sure that you are having nice smooth curves as you're going around. Because if you don't, if they're really jumpy, then you're gonna have like square points where you don't want them in your stocking. So just try to take those curves nice and smoothly and pivot slowly as you're going around the curved areas of the toe and the heel. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the stocking right side out. What I'm gonna do is reach my hand in between where the uh, outside fabric is. And I'm gonna reach all the way to the toe and I'm gonna pull that out. Obviously you gotta smooth it out a little bit, make it look actually like a stocking. So pay close attention to the toes and the heel. We'll press this too and that'll help. So at this point, you should have your right side of your stocking facing out. If we take a peek, I can see that my edges are pretty well lined up there. I did a pretty decent job keeping those sweaters even. So when you see it from the side and it's full, it'll look super cute. And like we took that extra step, it looks very nice and professional. Now when you pull it in and you open it up, you should also have right sides together of your lining facing as well. And in between each of those should be some batting. So it really is very simple. Now all we have to do is make our hanger and put our sleeve on top and we are almost done with this. I'm gonna give this a press before I do the next step because I want a nice true measurement of what my top is. And it might vary from stocking to stocking for you from year to year. Um, it just kind of depends on how well you're doing, how thick your batting is, lots of things. So I don't like to use water, so I use a spray mister instead. So I'm gonna spritz all my edges there. Then I'm gonna start with the top of my stocking and I'll start on this side. And I'm just gonna give that a good press. What I'm doing is I'm using my fingers to press that seam out. So that way I have a nice flat seam and I'm not losing anything to that seam allowance. It's really easy when you're doing garments to accidentally have too much stuck in that fold. And really it, it doesn't matter so much for this one, except for at that top. We want to have it as wide as, as we can for that. All right, here it's worth taking a little extra time to get that toe as rounded as it can be.
All right, so now that we have this nice and pressed, it's time to measure the top so that we can get our length for our sleeve that goes over the top. So I am at six and a quarter. I'm going to double that measurement and then add half an inch for my seam allowance because we need to double it so it can go all the way around and then that half inch because we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam. So six and a quarter times two is going to be 12 and a half plus a half inch is going to be 13. So that is the width that I'm going to cut that to and that way I will know the measurement that I'm supposed to use for that. Also make sure that you are cutting your hanger at the same time and all the measurements for that are in the pattern to go with this. Again, it's a super simple Christmas stocking, the template, the written instructions with diagrams, all of it is free to download on our website, shop.quiltedexamus.com. We do ask that if you get inspired to do something that you get the supplies to make it from us as a way to say thanks for the free tutorials and patterns. Now, I normally do not do this, but because this is a plaid, I wanna make sure that I match matching up my stripes from end to end. So when I go to put this together, I'm gonna go ahead and pin and make sure all those stripes are lining up nicely right on top of each other. If you don't have a plaid like this, you can just sew it and match up your corners and you don't have to fuss with that. Uh, but I decided to be a little bit extra with this and I thought that that plaid would make a really cute top to the stocking. So that's what we're doing. I'm also going to prep my hanger at the same time so I can sew them at the same time and save a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna fold them right sides together to start with, just to get my outside fold, keeping those long edges together. Then you're gonna unfold it and you're gonna fold, I usually do the bottom side first, in to meet that center fold that we just pressed into it and go ahead and work your way down. Then you're gonna do the same thing with the top. And this time I usually fold it over so that way I can make sure that my folded edges are meeting nicely. And I work the rest of my way down. All right, so now I'm just leaving my walking foot on because this is just a teeny little bit of regular stitching. I'm gonna stitch down one side of my hanger and back up the other side. And I'm gonna stitch down the side that I pinned together. And again, you do not need to pin if unless you're doing something where it's important that your design matches up like the plaid that I'm using. All right, we are in the home stretch of this Christmas stocking. I'm gonna go ahead and start and just press this piece here, get it ready to go inside my stocking. Set that to the side. Now for this one, what I wanna do is make sure that I press my seam open first. So I'm just gonna use my fingertips to open up that seam. And really, I just kinda put the tip of the iron on there because I do not wanna accidentally press those sides. I wanna have a nice, pliable fabric piece to work with. So I just have the tip of the iron down so that I can get that nice and pressed open without messing with any of those. Now what I'm gonna do is turn it, I'm gonna match these seams and turn it so that the right sides are facing out. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in here just so that I can keep those seams together pretty easily. Match them up, get my little pin in there. And then I'm gonna find the other side here. And I'm gonna put a pin in on this side as well, just so that I've got a nice uh, guide to work with. Now that I have those in place, I can go ahead and flatten out the rest of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little press as well. Now it's time to slide this and the hanger on the inside of the stocking. I usually start with the hanger and making sure that you are working with the lining. You want everything, the right side of these fabrics to be facing the right side of the lining. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this out and you are going to kind of look at it from the top and think what side is gonna be facing out when this hangs. And so I've got my single fold side facing me. So whatever the front of your stocking is going to be. And I usually like to put that so that it is right over that center seam. And I'm gonna pin that in place first. Then I'm going to take my seam side, so this side here, and I'm gonna match it up with the seam of the back of the stocking. That way that front of the stocking will just be a nice smooth 
look there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the pin that I used to hold that together and I'm just gonna pin on the other side of that seam allowance. This is a very thick seam at this point, um, so be careful as you're pinning so you don't poke yourself. And now I'm gonna match up this other half here with the seam on this side. And now what we wanna do is ease in the rest of this. So I'm going to start with the center. I just kind of pull on the outsides and walk my fingers in. And I'm making sure that I'm lining up all the tops of my outside, my bind, or my batting, and my lining, and now the sleeve. I'm gonna get that all lined up. Then I'm also gonna pin at the quarter marks just so I've got some nice stopping points. That way if you're off at all with any of your measurements, you can ease that in throughout rather than having a big pleat, which doesn't look so nice when you're all done. All right, now I'm gonna repeat that process on the back side. Now, almost all sewing machines are gonna have a compartment that comes out here. I'm gonna remove that, so that way I can put the stocking over this. It's great for when you're doing garments and things that are small that you need to wrap around like sleeves. And it also is great for projects like this. So I'm gonna start on the back side of my stocking, right in the middle, and I'm going to try to just slide this over. And that fits just perfectly over the edge of this machine. And it'll be great because then I'm not gonna be fussing with a top layer when I'm sewing the bottom and things like that. It's not, it's no fun to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing. And again, I'm sewing a little bit more on the quarter inch because I want that right side of that feed dog on the upper side to be touching the fabric. That way it'll help move it along. So I'm gonna sew a few forward and a few back. Get that anchored in well. And then you're just gonna slowly make your way around and pull your pins out as you come to them. All right, so I've reached the point where I've started. I'm gonna sew a few inches beyond that. I'm trying to stay on the same line I started with. And then I'm going to reverse and sew forward again, just to make sure that that is super secure. All right, so this is the fun part where it gets to look like a stocking. I'm gonna pull that out. And your hanger should pop up. And then you're just going to work it with it until it is folding nice and flat and your lining should be even with the top of that. And then I'm gonna give it a final press and so it'll look super cute and ready to stuff some gifts in. For this one, I kinda like to fold from the inside. That way I can press that lining to the inside of the stocking because the lining is cute. It's got these super cute little teal uh, snowballs on it, but I don't want to see it. I want to see uh, when it's hanging on the mantle. I just want to see that teal part. I don't want to see white at the top. So I just kind of roll that in just a smidge and it works pretty well that way. One final press from this side and we are all done. We've got our super cute sweater with a little bit of plaid on top Christmas stocking. This is super easy, super simple, and the pattern for this and the templates are available for free on our website over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. It's called the Super Simple Christmas Stocking. You could quilt this if you wanted before you put it together. Um, in that case, you would need an extra half yard of fabric. Um, any will do, but you want it to be lighter than whatever you're using for your lining. Um, and we have lots of Christmas fabric still in stock. So if we run out of the sweaters because you see it and there's a run on them, there's a bunch of other really cute ones from this line and a bunch of others. So it's really fun, really fast to make. You can make a whole bunch um, on Christmas Eve if you so choose. Uh, remember you need a half yard of fabric if your fabric is not directional for the outside. You need two thirds a yard if your fabric is directional for the outside. And then you need a quarter yard for your top and your hanger. And and then you need a half yard for your lining on the inside. So it really doesn't use up too much fabric. You're gonna get some good scraps left over that you can save and use on future projects. And as always, make sure you're subscribed to our channel over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Um, you can subscribe to our emails. We'll send you a coupon that you can use on your first purchase. And also then you'll get emails from us for the rest of the series that have all the videos in it. Plus we send out weekly tutorials when it's not holiday time and we're not doing 12 makes of Christmas. And also if you subscribe here on YouTube, then you will be sure not to miss anything. A lot of times when we feature stuff in a video, it's gone relatively quickly. So the best way to make sure you don't miss out when you find something that you just have to have is to make sure that you watch those videos right away. 
All right, thanks so much. And we will be back tomorrow with some more Christmas stockings because this one's super easy. We're gonna have a couple more coming up that flex your skills a little bit more.